Picture this, you're a Canadian with no target in sight, but you love the hearth and hand line of home decor. What are you gonna do? DIY it with Dollar Star Finds. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. We just got back from the most epic RV trip of our lives. My whole family went down to Disneyland, 64 hours of driving, such a fantastic trip. I did stop off at some of my favorite American stores like Target, like World Market, like Trader Joe's. I didn't buy a ton of stuff, but I did see some amazing home decor items in Target. However, I thought I could DIY a lot of these, I think with dollar store items. So today I'm gonna to show you some hearth and hand inspired home decor DIY ideas made with Dollarama finds. That's the dollar store here in Canada. So let's get started. This one is so easy. I really love this simple rolling pin from Hearth and Hand at Target. I love the black handles, just a really beautiful contrast. We're gonna make that with a Dollarama rolling pin. Such a great price. And all I'm doing for this one is I am just using some painter's tape and taping off the middle section of the rolling pin. Then I'm just using some leftover plastic drop cloth, wrapping that around the rolling pin, securing it with tape. And I'm using this matte black spray paint from Bare. Matte black, I feel like has more of that modern farmhouse look as opposed to gloss black. So if you can find a matte black spray paint, use that. For all of these DIYs, I'm trying to use what I already have on hand to make these budget friendly. You could also use black chalk paint or black acrylic paint as well. Now I'm taking the spray paint and just spraying those handles. When you're working with spray paint, just remember it's always better to do several thin coats than one or two thick coats. It's gonna give you a better finish ultimately in your finished product. Once I did a few thin coats on the handles of this rolling pin, I'm removing the painter's tape and the plastic. All done. This one is so easy. I'm gonna style it how I saw it on the Target website. Kind of be inspired by the hearth and hand photo styling. And I think this turned out so fantastically. Easy, simple, cheaper than the one from Target. Hearth and Hand decor line, there's a set of canisters that I love. They're very farmhouse inspired again. They have beautiful wooden tops. When I found this ceramic and bamboo lid canister at Dollarama, I was thrilled. I mean, you can use this completely as is. I love the glass. I love the top. They had a few different textures of canisters. My favorite is this hobnail version. However, I wanted to give it a little bit of an extra DIY kick to make it look a little more similar to the hearth and hand version at Target. For this one, I'm going to whip out my Cricut Joy. I love this smaller machine that Cricut has because it's just really portable. It's fantastic for things like this or for labels. If you do not have a Cricut, no worries. You can grab some stickers at your local dollar store. They have lots of different alphabet stickers and lots of different colors. You could also even consider using glass paint and a paintbrush to do this as well. I found a font that had that sort of rustic farmhouse look on Cricut Design Space. I'm just writing out the word coffee, adding a little bit of space in between the letters to give it that similar vibe. And then I'm cutting this with my Cricut Joy onto some brown permanent vinyl. Now that the coffee decal is all cut, I'm weeding away the excess vinyl, putting some transfer tape on top of that, and then just cleaning up the top of the canister with some painter's tape. This is a hack if you do not have a lint roller. Painter's tape can also take away any extra dust and dirt on your Cricut projects as well. Now I'm applying the decal to the top of this canister. So it just has this cute little coffee decal on the top. And now we're ready to style this on my counter. This one is another really simple one and again, if you don't have a Cricut, use those dollar store stickers. You can finish those off with just a little bit of a Mod Podge to make sure they stay. You could also try some glass paint as well if you want that more hand-drawn look. I think creating a DIY set of these canisters would be so fun and they would also make for a really cute gift. Mm -hmm. 
you know that I love throw pillows. I feel like they're a really easy and relatively inexpensive way to change up your decor seasonally if you want, or when you're feeling a little bit bored with your space, add in some color, add in some pattern. Hearth and Hand has so many cute throw pillows. Of course, I love the farmhouse inspired look, a little bit boho inspired as well. This one is fantastic. It's striped. It has this texture on the side with the tassels. We're going to recreate this with a Dollarama towel. This kitchen towel at Dollarama, very cheap, only $2. And I feel like it has the right striped farmhouse vibe for this DIY. So I'm taking two of these towels and I'm just trimming them a little bit on the top and the bottom because I want this pillow to be a little more oblong rather than square. I found this scrap of fringe. I think it might be dark navy, but I feel like it's black enough to really match with these pillows. It was just left over from another project. You could also get the same effect for this DIY throw pillow by making four tassels with some leftover yarn for each corner of the pillow. I will leave my tutorial for DIY tassels, super easy, down in the description box below. Now I'm pinning my little scraps of fringe trim on either side of the pillow on the short ends, making sure that it's turned in to the right side of the pillow, pinning that together. Now I'm using my sewing machine and just sewing those along the short sides of the pillow. I definitely recommend trying out a sewing machine for projects like this. Pillows and curtains, drapes, those home decor items usually require just long straight seams. So they're really great if you want to start trying out using a sewing machine. If you don't, you could also use fabric glue to make these pillows, or you could also use my favorite hot glue, which is the Gorilla Hot Glue, and it usually works really well for fabric. Once the fringe is sewn on either side, I'm taking my other kitchen towel, placing it right sides together with the one with the fringe, pinning that around, and then sewing the perimeter of those two pieces together. If you're doing this, just make sure you leave about a six inch hole in the bottom of the pillow so that you can put the pillow cover right side out at the end. Now that I'm done sewing the two sides of the pillow together, I'm just trimming those corners. So if you clip the corners, you're not gonna have that extra bulk when you flip the pillow cover right side out. Now I'm taking that cover, flipping it right side out, and just trimming off any of the excess little fringe bits that I'm seeing on the ends. One tip that I love, if you have old sleeping pillows, don't throw them out, save them, because you can use that polyester fill for all of these DIY throw pillow projects and probably a ton more DIYs as well. I had this old pillow that was ripped, so I just took out the filling from that pillow and pushed it inside this new pillow cover. Now that my pillow looks nice and fluffy and full, I'm taking a needle and thread and I'm sewing that hole shut with what's called a blind stitch. If you're not familiar with that kind of hand stitching, I will leave a tutorial for that down in that description box below. Now this pillow is all done and this one is surprising me. I really like this one. The fringe on the end is just a great way to make this look a little bit more exciting than just a plain throw pillow. And I actually really like the texture of these kitchen towels. I know you're gonna ask, how do you wash pillows like this that aren't removable? What I like to do is throw them in my washing machine on the hand wash setting and then just lay them flat to dry. I find that that works perfectly well and it's a lot easier if you're a beginning seamstress than having to sew a zipper, Velcro or buttons on the pillow cover. I thought this hanging plant was really cute from Hearth and Hand. One of my favorite planters at Dollarama is this amazing textured one. So you can find it usually in a gray color and then a terracotta color as well. So I grabbed it in this color. They also have these macrame plant hangers for a great deal and I grabbed one of those as well. This DIY is really simple. We're gonna create this hearth and hand piece with these two Dollarama finds. I'm using some faux hanging greenery that I already had on hand, but you can also find this at the Dollarama or probably the Dollar Tree as well. I'm placing my planter inside of that macrame holder, and then I had this floral foam in my stash. I'm cutting that to size and pushing it into the container. When you use floral foam, just make it slightly larger than the pot that you're putting it in so that it fits in there nice and snugly. Now 
I am just trimming down these long pieces of faux greenery and bending them and pushing them inside of the pot. For this one, I kind of want to rearrange those hanging greenery, make sure they stick out all over the different sides of the pot in between the strings of the hanger to make everything look a little more realistic. I'm also adding some moss, found this at Dollarama as well, to the top of the pot to kind of cover up those plastic looking stems. For this one, I also wanted to create a little vignette inspired by the one I saw on the Target website. So I'm hanging this planter on an Ikea bracket on the wall, looks so cute, adding a vintage chair, blanket, another plant, and this DIY is all done. Easy, inexpensive, could look great in a bedroom, in a bathroom, even in a basement. You could also put a real plant in here as well. I don't think you can ever have enough cutting boards or trays and Target has a lot of super adorable ones. I really liked this one from the Hearth and Hand line. I liked that it had this speckled white bottom and the wooden top. Dollarama has some affordable bamboo cutting boards. So I am taking this one and I am taping off a little bit of the top of this cutting board. So you can truly tape it off wherever you want. I'm also using some leftover plastic drop cloth to cover up the top of this paddle. I really wanted to use some glossy white spray paint for this DIY to give the bottom more of a ceramic, glossier look. However, my white spray paint was not working, so I kinda had to do a plan B, and I'm using this white chalk paint. So it's gonna look more matte than the Hearth and Hand version, but I feel like it's still gonna give it a similar effect. I'm using this white chalk paint and a brush and painting that bottom part of this cutting board. I'm painting the sides and the other side of the cutting board as well. Once it's dry, I'm doing a second coat. Now that the white is all painted and it's dry, I'm gonna take some black matte spray paint and add a speckled effect. So I've done a speckled effect for DIYs in a couple different ways. The first one is you could spray right onto a brush and then flick that brush onto your project to give it that vintage look, that speckled look. What I'm doing here, and I've tried this before and it's been successful, is I'm going to spray from a really high height so that just the, the speckles, the little droplets from my spray paint will fall onto this cutting board to give it the speckled effect that I want. So holding it high up and just spraying it lightly seems to work. I'm loving the speckled effect. And now that it's all dry, I'm taking off the painter's tape, taking off the plastic, and I thought I'd add just a little bit of a scrap piece of lace trim on the top to give it just a little more oomph. If you wanna make this food safe, you could coat it with a clear coating that is food safe. However, I don't need mine to be food safe. I'm just gonna use it as a tray for other bowls. So I'm just leaving it exactly how it is. It's perfect to arrange things in my coffee station, to arrange things for a brunch on my side table. And this one would also make a cute gift and it's a great price. So what do you think? Do you like my hearth and hand dupes? Which one is your favorite? I would love to know. Let me know down in those comments below. If you're looking for more DIY and home decor ideas on a budget, I have some more videos for you to watch next right up here.